D3 is awesome for visualizations, but it's a bit too low level at times, especially when you want to do stuff like build a bunch of graphs. Rickshaw is a wrapper project by the people at Shutterstock that makes graphing with D3 much easier. There are also some challenges using D3 and Rickshaw with AngularJS. This screencast will show you how to surmount those. Let's dive in. We generate our Angular app using Yeoman. We're going to massage our data with underscore JS, so let's install it with Bower. We install Rickshaw in the same way. This also installs D3 for us. We need to add references to everything we just installed to the index.html file in order to get it loaded into the Angular app. Rickshaw also comes with a bunch of CSS which we need to pull in. Now let's start the dev server using grunt. Ok, it looks like our stack is ready. We've prepared some data for the screencast which you can download if you are following along. The data consists of dates of reported UFO sightings in 2008. As you can see it's super simple, just a bunch of dates exported from a MongoDB. We need to wire up the data in our controller. I'm injecting the HTTP service making a call to our dev server and setting the results on scope, so that we can check it out in a view. We clear out the generated stuff and set a heading for our view. And we want to repeat a div for each item in our sightings array. Looking good so far. In order to let D3 play well with Angular's weird and wonderful run loop, we're creating a custom directive that will render our graph. We wire up our newly minted directive in the view, just to make sure everything is cool. Looks ok. We want to start fleshing out this directive and start using Rickshaw to render our D3 graph. We have to bind two variables from the controller's scope, allowing the containing view to point the directive to the correct variables in the form of attributes set on the directive. This interesting equal syntax does all that for us. I'm using this for both of the attributes that we want to wire up in this manner. In our link function we want to make sure that our directive re-renders every time that the data or renderer values change. We use the nifty watch collection function for this. Watch collection takes two parameters. The first is a string that Angular can eval on its scope to create a collection consisting of all the items it should watch. The second is a function that should execute when a value in the collection has changed. We don't want to resume if the data was not set on the scope. So we return if it's undefined. Finally we're getting to the good stuff, the rickshaw code. We need to pull out the first div in the directives template. We're going to target this div with the rickshaw graph. At the moment this template only has one div, but we'll be adding more later on. We call the rickshaw graph constructor function and specify our first div as the target element. For the width and height arguments, we just pull the width and height values from the attributes set on the directive by the view. We'll make sure to specify them in the view soon. And now we set the data that the graph will bind to. We can pass multiple series to the graph, but we're going to keep it simple and bind only one series to it. We wrap our data in an array structure which Rickshaw expects. The last argument to the graph constructor is the renderer that it should use. The renderer is just a fancy name for chart type. Lastly we just call render on the graph object.
I see I incorrectly prefix scope with a dollar sign here. Our directive expects two values to be set on its scope, the renderer which we default to line and the data it will bind to. We're going to point our directive to these values in the view. We utilize underscore to format the data correctly for rickshaw. First we use count by, which counts the number of occurrences with the same date. Count by takes a function which is used to determine the grouping of each item in the collection, in our case the sighting's date. At this stage we have an object with attributes for each date it found with the number of occurrences as values. We use the pairs function to morph this structure into a nested array format. Now we can map it to the structure expected by Rickshaw. It expects an array populated with objects that have x and y attributes that it can use to plot the x and y axes of the graph. In our case we want the x value to be the date and the y value the number of sightings for that date. Rickshaw also expects the data to be sorted according to the x values. So we use the sort by function to sort the items accordingly. Because we instructed underscore to start a chain of commands, we need to tell it that we want the value to be calculated now. In our view we want to wire up the correct values for the directive to function. The most important value is the pointer to the data on the controller's scope. We're going to specify blue for the color and point it to the renderer value we set on the controller's scope. We also give it some sensible values for the width and height attributes. And we've got a D3 chart bound to some data with almost no effort. I'd like to show you something cool quickly. Remember we made the renderer an attribute on the directive? By changing this value we can quickly change this from a line graph to a bar graph. And we can also change it to a scatter plot graph. We've got a pretty naked graph at the moment. Let's spice it up a bit with an x-axis that displays the date. Luckily Rickshaw makes this easy. All we've got to do is construct a time axis, associate it with our graph and render the axis. There, now we've got an x-axis. It's not very visible at the moment, but we'll remedy that soon. We'd also like a y-axis that displays the number of sightings for the day. The code looks exactly like the x-axis, but we use a y-axis object instead of a time-axis object. We've got a y-axis hooked up, but the graph really doesn't look great. Luckily we can do something about that. That blue is a bit hectic, so let's tone it down a bit. Looks a bit better, but we can still improve a lot. What's nice about D3 is that it generates SVG markup and we can style that with CSS. I'm targeting the x-axis first. It's easy to figure out how to target the elements by having a look at the markup that D3 generates for us. Let's make a couple of changes here so that it's fully opaque, has a better color and that it's positioned below the graph to make it more readable. That's looking much better. I also want the values in the y-axis to be fully opaque. This should give you an idea of how easy it is to style a rickshaw generated D3 graph with CSS. Let's make our graph more interactive by adding some info that appears when you hover over the data points using rickshaw's hover detail function. As with the axes we need to provide it with a graph it should attach to. The next argument is totally optional but I wanted to illustrate the flexibility of the rickshaw controls by providing a custom value for the tooltip that will show when you hover over a data point in the graph. This we achieve by passing a function as the formatter argument which uses the values of data points to build up a label for the tooltip. There you go, a custom tooltip. Instead of hard coding the chart type on the controller, we'll make it a bit more dynamic. We need to specify the type options in an array and set it on the scope. We bind the view to the array in the form of a dropdown. Luckily Angular makes this really easy with the ng options directive. 
Now we can easily change the chart type directly from the view. It's a bit difficult to discern individual dates on the graph, so let's add a way to zoom in on the data by using the slider functionality provided by Rickshaw. Unfortunately, this requires some widgets from jQuery UI, so we need to pull that into our project with Bower. We need to reference the correct JavaScript and CSS from jQuery UI to support our slider widget. We do a couple of things in our directive to pull in the slider. We construct the slider similar to how we constructed the previous chart controls. We specify the graph it should be attached to, and we also need to specify an element that should contain the slider. We hook it up to the child element of our template with a class called slider. Because our template doesn't have such an element yet, we create it in the template argument to the directive. And now we've got a functional slider that allows us to zoom in and out and also move backwards and forwards on the graph. But I don't like its position, so I'll tweak it in the CSS. I think the slider should be positioned below the chart and not over it. That looks better to me. I hope you've enjoyed this tag tree screencast on getting your D3 on through Rickshaw.